Oh, you read that right. They definitely made a lawn mowing simulator. Hello again there, friends and fans. Raptor here, and welcome to our first look at the full release of Lawn Mowing Simulator. A couple of months ago, I took a look at the demo of this game, and I was absolutely in love. But it raised the question, how are they going to make this game worth it other than just mowing lawns? Well, this game is more of a small business tycoon simulator as you get the choice to buy and build different types of things for your different garages and also hire different employees. If you've ever played American Truck Simulator or Euro Truck Simulator before, then you'll know exactly what I mean as there's many options to buy different types of properties, to store many different types of mowers, and you can hire those employees to work for you on other jobs, making everyone work to make you mow money. <laughs> I'm sorry, I apologize, but I had to do a little joking. All jokes aside, I like this game a lot. I've been playing it quite a bit. You can see my profile in the lower uh, right corner there, and I've also played a lot of the demo, and I'll be showing you a lot more mowers, including Skeg, Toro, and many others. I think we have ourselves a night mower in our current game, but we'll be doing things like expanding our garage and hiring more employees for that very soon. But to start with, I wanted to just remind you to click or tap that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell if we get giveaways or keys for giveaways. We do those giveaways on our live streams and of course on our Discord, so if you're not a subscriber, you're missing out on all the fun. Make sure you subscribe now for free and of course smash like to support the channel. Appreciate everyone being here. Let's go ahead and skip the tutorial, start a new game, and I want to show you what it's like to first create your owner, your own character, for the game and I think this is a really good setup here I like this uh, so far the logo here we can do all sorts of things like naming our company so we can go ahead and call this one uh, Mo Money for example excellent and we can also change our company logo if we want to so we can go ahead and do that now I think I like the logo that we had so we'll go with that the logo will appear on the front and back of our uniform too so as we're mowing lawns if it happens to be a standing mower or uh, I believe all these in the game are uh, seated mowers sometimes you'll be able to see the uh, back of the employee and so if they're on a zero turn, you'll be able to see that propped up nice and high on your screen as you're mowing lawns. Let's go ahead and edit our player, too. We can have all sorts of different players. We're going to go ahead and call this guy Dave here. And Dave, of course, can also be, uh, you know, you can have a man or a woman or whomever you choose, similar to you or maybe a friend or somebody you worked with or whoever. And, of course, we can also change their hat color. So in this case, I think red, uh, black is a good color here. Red would be good, too. But I think we'll go with something like this. We'll go with a uh, logo on the front only. And we'll change the uniform colors to be uh, maybe black and green like this. There we go. That looks real nice. So we'll go with that. And as we confirm, uh, the logo placement should be on the front. Uh, maybe it doesn't pop up here, but it should as we pick our character, that type of thing. But anyway, there it goes. So now we've got our logo picked out. We've got our uniform colors. It looks great. Let's confirm. So as you can see, we've started now with about... Uh, 3,000 British pounds. So this game is based in the United Kingdom and you can see all the different types of mowers that we have access to. Keep in mind that there's many differences between these mowers as well, like their fuel capacity is something that you'll need to monitor, as well as the different types of attachments they get. For example, this one having a mulch plate and as you work your way up the line you can get all different types of brands including Patterson and also again there you go you see your mulching deck there or for example on this skag right here you should be able to see that it has the, sti the Tiger Stripe Kit. A mulch plate is also part of that skag mower. So the tiger stripe kit, very helpful for keeping those beautiful straight lines up to 8.5 or 13 kilometers per hour. And of course that giant fuel tank of almost 30 liters, which will keep you uh, mowing nonstop on many a big job. Now, one of the things to keep in mind too is that when you use some of these smaller mowers, uh, you can also sell them but you can give them to your employees to do the smaller jobs while you work your way up to do the more preferable, bigger jobs. Now, here's all the brands in the game. You can take a brief look at everything that's available, everything from OFTs to uh, Toro brands here, and uh, all the way up to the Groundmaster, for example, or uh, the, I think it's called the Outfront Tractor, uh, the OFT, or Outfront Tractor's Knight's Top of the Range Vehicle. There you go. So yeah, all sorts of different types of designs and dealers, and many different attachments for them too that you'll have to keep in mind. We'll start for the Knight, uh, for example, we'll spend, wow, 2,650 pounds down to 350. So that $3,000 pretty much immediately disappears, and there you go. So in this game, there's many things to keep in mind. If we start under the HQ section, you can see that we can upgrade our garage, which then will allow us to, uh, in seven days, upgrade it to have one extra bay, so that way we can have an extra mower and then start hiring employees. So it's advisable to first upgrade your uh, mower, or your, uh, sorry, your HQ, so you can hold more mowers and then hire another employee after you buy another mower. So HQ, mower, and then employee. I think the employees also have like, a, depending on their skills, 200 or 250 uh, pound 
uh, fees or whatnot. So there's many things to consider. Advertisements, for example, are some things that increase your uh, reputation points, which then allows you to unlock more jobs. And more jobs means more money as well, as some of the jobs will be bigger and more complex. Now, we've seen the front garden job before. There's many things to cover in this game. Just to go over some of the HQ stuff, too, we'll go ahead and take a look here. I think we can, uh, if we jump back, we can take a look at what HQ building we have uh, selected. So we can go ahead and purchase a new HQ. Right now, we start with the red wall building, and we can work our way up to uh, very large buildings that have many different bays once you've uh, upgraded them, too. And so they can have massive capacities 200,000 pounds to buy that one wow plus all the money w what it would take to uh, store all those mowers you can make a ton of money and do a lot of jobs there's a lot of jobs to this game too i assume that it would be maybe like four uh, to ten different jobs repeating but it seems like there may be many more than that and of course the ability to take out loans eventually i would also recommend that you take out a loan asap so that way you can go ahead and then start immediately trying to upgrade obviously these uh, will not let us take out the loan at the moment we need newcomer rank three so, I would say that the mode of progression for this game should be to try to get to the highest level of uh, reputation as you can, take out a loan ASAP, and then immediately start trying to upgrade your HQ, so then you can buy another mower and buy or hire another employee after you've done that. Right, well, let's go ahead and take a look at the game. Thanks for sticking with me so far. Let's see how it goes. Well, it's time now to get into our first job, so we're going to do just that then. This is our contract that's located at uh, the front garden of the Old Nook Cottage. We'll earn 330 pounds for doing this and a small amount of RP, and it's a complexity level 1. As you can see on the screen, at the very bottom there, it says recommended deck width. We have a 98 centimeter deck width right now. This is 100, so it's a perfect job for us. We also need to cut the grass between 5 and 6 centimeters, and also the grass thick. Uh, the thickness of the grass is very important in this game at 13 to 20 centimeters. What that means is how quickly can we mow before the mower becomes over, uh, I guess, overwhelmed with the grass and then it's not as effective and can cause damage to the ground. Obviously, you can crash into things and that's something you want to avoid in this game. So we'll go with uh, our employee Dave, or I guess us, and then we'll go ahead and confirm that contract and start. Now, keep in mind, when you hire employees in this game, too, you're not able to just sit back and put your feet up. They have to work at the same time as you. So, in other words, if you hire an employee and think that they're going to take over while you wait a few days to get your next upgrade, they only work in conjunction with you. So you need to make sure that you have two jobs, two mowers, and two bays ready to go, so that way you can have two employees working on two different jobs. They uh, cannot work at the same job at the same time, from what I understand so far. So let's go ahead and jump into this one and see how it goes. I'll show you around the map a little bit. Okay, so here we are at a place many of you have seen in many of my demos so far. The front garden of the old Nook Cottage. Lots of stuff here to uh, avoid. Trees and flowers and I believe also a few uh, little beautiful archways. And there's also some objects in the grass that you may have seen that we'll have to go and pick up manually. We'll go over some things here as we uh, go to do that in just a moment. But one thing to keep in mind, too, is that any time that we come to a job, we're also uh, able to refill the mower. And we can also, um, another good thing is that we can repair the blades, too. So before we get on our mower, if we forgot fuel or something, or if we need to stop, I believe we can come back here and refuel our mo mower on the trail. I'm not exactly sure. But we can definitely do it before we start the job by walking around like this. So as we walk around the garden, we want to walk around the perimeter and look for anything that uh, might uh, damage the mower and be thrown up. And, uh, of course, uh, you know, things that could damage the property or uh, even the owner's property. As it could be anything like, for example, a lawn gnome or something. This is just a newspaper or a magazine that flew over the edge. And so we can also sprint to as we look around. But also it's a good opportunity to get a lay of the land and see where the challenges might be and where the grass is the thickest. You'll even be able to see birds flying over sometimes and uh, you'll see like little shadows moving across the grass. But areas like this where it looks a lot darker green and where it looks a little thicker compared to an area like this, for example, which you can tell when you're on the mower, you know that are going to cause you some problems. Looks great so far. I really uh, don't see any major improvements to the graphics since I last played it. Uh, but that's not a bad thing, as it was pretty good to start with. We've got two more objects to find, and we have a limited time to do it. There's no bonus or anything for doing this, so if you want to look around the property and take a look at, for example, uh, the owner's very cool-looking cars, you can do that, too. Every one of the houses in this game have some really nice homes and really nice cars, too. They're all nicely developed. And it actually makes me want to play some more of the uh, Sim Cottage Living DLC that came out. But you can walk around and kind of take a look at all the stuff. They're, they're nicely detailed. There's not really... Uh, much that they skimped on or that they were lazy about when they designed this. So that's good. And there's, yeah, plenty of detail. Plenty of trees around. 
plenty of uh, flowers, and there's many different places to go to. We can eventually uh, go ahead and mow large monuments and things like that. So parade grounds and castles is what we'll work our way up to once we earned all the reputation. If we do enough work here, we should be able to eventually work up to bigger homes of millionaires and celebrities and then eventually start working on very important national monuments and uh, public spaces like large parks and such. All right, well, I don't see any more objects, but there must be one more. we got to find it then. Uh, we're lollygagging a little bit, but oh, here we go. This is what we're looking for, something like what looks to be a, a pruning thing there. So we'll go ahead and now get on our mower and begin to mow. Now, one of the most important things in this game is to just kind of try to balance speed and precision while also not overwhelming the mower with the amount of uh, grass that can come up into it. So we're going to go ahead and hop on our mower. We then uh, I'm using an Xbox controller. By the way, I would highly recommend an Xbox controller, though this game is playable with the steering wheel and also mouse and keyboard. I've played mouse and keyboard. It's not as precise, a little more clunky. I think the Xbox controller is perfect for all the different levers and switches, uh, but of course, a steering wheel is just fine as well. All right, let's go ahead and start the engine then. And we'll get the RPMs up to uh, 3,000, I believe. Yep, and we'll roll off the trailer. So when we're done here, we also have to roll back onto the trailer. And you can see our fuel, for example. When you get to about half in the game, it'll start uh, signing like a red alert. But you should be able to mow this lawn, for example, about three times before uh, you even need to uh, refuel. So we're going to go ahead and make sure that we're at the correct mow height. Right now we're at seven, and it is between five and six, so we need to turn that down to six. We're going to lower our cutting deck. There we go. And you can also, one of the things I want to note on the side, which I want to applaud the developers for, there's all sorts of different sound settings here. Everything from, for example... Uh, worrying about the um, the engine sound effects to the blade sound effects to the UI to the ambient sound effects So you can balance it to however you really want it to be so that's really nice I think they did a fantastic job with all the different audio settings that shouldn't be ignored because sometimes the mower might be a little too loud and uh, Sometimes it might be a little too quiet. Maybe you want to hear the engine more. It all depends on your liking So customization is definitely key. So you see the white a little ring that's filling up around the what looks to be a speedometer. That's actually not a speedometer. It's actually kind of the, um, I don't know what the technical term would be, but it's eventually the, uh, as we hit more thick grass, uh, we will fill it up to about where that yellow, or rather red triangle is. And the yellow speed isn't really not anything we need to be concerned about. It's more about the precision of our turns. And as you can see here, we're, we're going to go into some thicker grass. This is just for demonstration purposes. You see how that fills up? That uh, white bar there fills up a little bit. Yeah, that's exactly what you want to try to avoid. So it's really about managing your speed, too. And as you can see, the uh, pedals also do kind of move as we accelerate a little bit. So that's quite quite nice there. Now, if you miss anything like I did back there, obviously, we, we went way off course on purpose to try to show what it's like uh, to go through thicker grass. You can always circle back and get those areas you missed. And sometimes there's going to be areas that you have to come back and do again as uh, you won't be able to get in there the first time. First example being this archway on our left, we'll just have to zip past it in order to uh, come back a little bit later. So that's just fine. We can zoom in there and grab that uh, grass that we missed later. Now you can see a progress bar in the upper right corner. As far as I know, you have to go between some of the easier jobs at 98% all the way up to 99.5% of the grass. So yes, getting every little section does count. And I haven't seen a difference yet in the uh, game in terms of doing like a spiral or a uh, pattern cut where you go around the outside of the yard versus going back and forth in a, in a stripe and a more square 90 degree setup as you would like farm fields. But of course, that's because some of these smaller mowers really aren't meant for that. They're kind of just meant for going along and doing smaller jobs in narrow spaces. So there's not really as many straight lines as where a, a large football field or a you know parade ground or large grassy area. It's definitely going to be more effective to go in straight lines. And that's what the Toro allows you to do or some of the Skag models allow you to do as well. Now, for those of you who are in the lawn mowing industry, let me know what some of your favorites are down below in the comment section. I'm curious to know what everybody wants to get their hands on the most. And also, uh, hopefully this game will be multiplayer in the future, though I don't think it features any of that. This would be a fantastic multiplayer game, not only just for the uh, working on jobs together, which you don't really need, it would be fun to work with a friend on two different jobs. There you go. You see we go over the red a little bit. Let's just go ahead and show an example of what that looks like. I think it tears up the ground a little bit as well. And uh, you'll be penalized. Very small, by the way. The, the game is very forgiving. It's about 50 pence or 50 cents uh, for some of these, um, you know, little mistakes. If you bump into something, it's a pound or two. And um, if you... Uh, if you uh, try to do a few, get like, for example, maintenance on your blades, that's about most expensive I've seen, 50 pounds for that, and maybe uh, 5 or 10 uh, for the fuel for a full tank. 
of gas if you're very, very low. Again, the game will let you know way ahead of time, almost way too, it's very sensitive, way too ahead of time that you're low on fuel. But like I mentioned, you can do this job at about a half tank, and that's pretty good. Less than a half tank, in fact. All right, let's see some other jobs. Let me know what you think so far. Let's go see some more of Lawn Mowing Simulator. Now, there's one point I wanted to make uh, before I finished my previous job, but I just forgot to capture it, is that when you're done with your job, you'll then have an opportunity to review everything, penalties, for example, uh, for bumping into anything, as I may have mentioned, and you'll also have to back the lawnmower back onto the trailer. Now, I've noticed of all the mowers, this night one seems to be a little tricky. You'll notice the front end of it start to, yeah, bounce a little bit, and you just got to kind of hit the gas as it's uh, pulled back onto the trailer. Now, once you hit this point, yep, it'll ask you if you want to end your job. In this case, I'm in test drive, which we'll come back to in a little bit, uh, and then that'll be the end of the job. So there's no real driving to the job site or whatnot, and this is fair because it's just a lawn mowing simulator, but, uh, of course, there is the maintenance that you can do, as I mentioned, modifying the blades or repairing the blades, changing them, and also adding fuel to your mower, too. And, of course, you can always uh, bring it back to the uh, trailer at any time, I believe, in order to refuel. I think that's a game mechanic, just in case. Otherwise, you'd kind of be stuck out of nowhere. But I really like this mower a lot. I, uh, the only big problem about it is that big end that sticks out whenever you're making a turn. So if you're turning before a tree... It's likely that the back end of your mower is going to bump into something, but that's the uh, challenge of each and every mower that you drive in the game. And, of course, also not damaging that deck by making sure that you lift it up as you're done mowing and put it down whenever you uh, are ready to start mowing. All right, well, we'll load her back up onto the trailer one more time. They do ask you to reverse the mower onto the trailer every time, too. So if you're having any trouble with that, you can always go into a uh, uh, closer view or uh, first person for that. Uh, this game would be incredibly wonderful in VR, but I've not seen any note on that, but I think that might be something the developers will just have to add. I'm really hoping that this game uh, gets a lot of people's attention, and I really hope that a lot of people want to pick it up. So that way, all that money that the developers make can go towards adding new features, new mowers, and new maps. And, of course, uh, with games nowadays, we might be able to get nice quality of life updates that really add to the experience. I like the trailer, too. I've noticed that it's um, pretty much the same trailer for every mower. Although they could get bigger for some of the bigger ones, as we've kind of dealt with just the smaller ones. Hell, even these would be like residential size. I could imagine somebody having this if they were really serious about their moderately sized yard. But, okay, let's test out some more stuff, and I'll show you guys more about Lawn Mowing Simulator. Hey, check it out. There's two of me now. Well, this is actually the other company that I started that I've been working on. And as you can see, we've only got one mower here. So something that I've learned... Uh, from just trial and error is that yes we do want to have ourselves a second bay before we buy a second mower before we hire an employee and uh, they've got some great descriptions too for the employees if we jump up here to the employee section we can see that we can uh, get some more people to hire and uh, like for example really likes pineapple on their pizza always looks on the bright side of life hates christmas due to fear of ribbon owns 16 cats wow so there's some great descriptions of the employees here, and you can also see some of their uh, proficiency. And you can also train your employees, too, so that way they can eventually step up to the jobs that you're doing and make tons of money and get rid of some of those older mowers. And as you can see, we can do a few different jo uh, jobs on the same property as well. For example, this orchard cottage allows us to mow their well, the actual orchard itself or a small garden near the orchard, too. So that's kind of a job where we can have two employees kind of on the same property working on the same jobs. Uh, yet in different areas so you know if you were the owner of the orchard you'd call the company and say hey i need a few uh, you know helping hands doing this job and so a few people would come out with equipment appropriate for the job no need to bring out the biggest stuff if you're working on two different areas and that's pretty cool so uh yes again remember to upgrade your hq immediately and then start getting some of those bigger mowers i'm gonna get working on trying to get a bigger mower then and uh what i've seen in this game so far is the scale seems to be quite large if you're afraid of it being over or boring quickly this seems to be a great like an rpg type game where you're working on leveling up a piece of equipment or a weapon or a tool for a very long time and then eventually can get something new once it's been uh, leveled up and in this case really getting your money and then getting that hq built and as you can see, our HQ here, I believe we checked that, uh, you can see that we've got five more days to go on our upgrade. So I have to do five more jobs and then also pay our employee uh, who, until we get that upgraded bay. So good idea to definitely hire some people only after you have the bay and only after you have the mower. I keep saying it, but it's kind of, uh, it doesn't really explain that too much. So just make that a word of mouth. Very important and very fun. Very, very fun. Many jobs. Very good. 
Okay, so the jobs are done. A loan is taken out. We now have access to a bunch more mowers as we now have that uh, bay available to house yet another mower. We've got an option of quite a few here, and I'd like to probably take a look here at the Toro and the uh, Skag to see which one I like the best. And the cool thing is we can actually test drive any of the mowers that we can afford before we purchase them. Unfortunately, we can't drive any of them by just pressing Y. We, they have to actually be within our price range. But the Toro Z Master 2000 and the Skag Patriot 52-inch uh, are both going to be fantastic contenders with small differences between them. One has a larger deck size and is capable of doing Tiger Stripe. The other one has a 48-inch recycler kit and also a rear discharge, that type of thing. Uh, and a little slower top speed, but also uh, might be a little better for tighter spaces. So it all depends on what the job requires. Okay, well, let's go ahead and test out both these bad boys, and we'll see how it goes. Let's try the uh, Toro first, and we'll see how it goes. Now, would you look at that? Absolutely beautiful. So on the side of this dealership, we have access to a little lot that we can uh, mow up with our uh, Toro 2000. Now get ready today for all the whoa wah videos of uh, I hi they hired me to mow grass and this happened because basically what you can do is cause absolute havoc with these mowers if you don't know what you're doing. If you've ever uh, ridden on one of these before, these zero turn mowers, I've uh, been on a few of these before from Xmark and they're really cool. So essentially the way this works is it's pretty darn close to zero turn. You can pretty much make a 360 degree turn in one place which is fantastic for getting up against a uh, very uh, close to tree lines or uh, pieces of wood, for example, like this, if the mower were on, you could see that we could basically turn and make a 90 degree turn if there was a fence right in front of us. So it makes it really easy to get into 90 degree areas. Uh, the only problem is the wheels stick out just a little bit out front, so you do kind of have to have a little bit of uh, clearance between whatever you're going to mow. But basically, we fire on the, the mower, we drop her down to like, uh, let's say, five centimeters, and we can cause all sorts of havoc. So if you want to have fun in this game and destroy stuff and, and don't really care about it, uh, like like they said there, they gave us a little warning. Uh, but this is the test drive. We can do what we want, right? <laughs> We're going to purchase this mower. We can do uh, crazy eights and all sorts of different things. We can basically make crop circles and do our woe if we want to and overreact to something that's really not that amazing. <laughs> Although it is kind of fun to, to destroy stuff like that. But anyway, this is a good opportunity to uh, test out the mower and see how to get around trees. Now, I would say these are much more challenging, by the way. If we're, if we're going to try to do this right... Um, these are a lot more challenging because of the speed that they have. And on a controller, uh, boy, this is uh, pretty close to what it's like. Oh, you can actually see all the grass being uh, mulched out the back. Nice. So, uh, yeah, so as you go around a tree, just, you know, slower on down and see if you can, you know, go real slow around these corners and that type of thing. I think, actually, if we uh, go to six centimeters, uh, let's see. Oh, we can only do 6.7 or 6.30, but we're going to want to do 6.5.70. Uh, That'll give us a little more leeway. So check out this mower, by the way. It really isn't affected that much by the length of the grass at all. Uh, we're traveling at about almost 8 miles an hour, and the engine's almost getting a little over-encumbered by the length of the grass, but everything seems to be going okay. You can see we pick up a lot of speed downhill, too. And this is the way you drive it, kind of like tank controls, where you pull a lever in the tank or in this case, the mower will turn left or right based on uh, how hard you're turning it. So very sensitive. And look, at very precise, too. So if you're mowing along a walkway that was curved, very cool stuff. Lots of cool stuff. Okay, let's go check out our other Patriot mower and see how we can do with the Tiger Stripe. And we'll try to do a little more uh, precise on that one. But both mowers, very capable of precision, speed, accuracy, and I like it a lot. Looks good. I wish it were dirtier, though. That'd be more accurate. And there's our beautiful Skag mower. Now, before we uh, start mowing with the uh, beautiful Patriot here, we're going to go ahead and take a look over at this uh, sign here showing you all the brands in the game, which reminds me that this game comes out on August 10th for PC and also Xbox and could possibly be, although I don't have it, uh, access to it myself, on the uh, Xbox Game Pass. So make sure you check that out to uh, see if it's available there or if it's coming soon. Let me know down below in the comments section for everyone else. And I'll definitely heart your comment on that one. Uh, this game, I could definitely imagine being somewhere between $20 and $30, which seems fair for all the brands that they have. You know, the brands need their money, too, for the licensing fees. So uh, I could definitely uh, see this at $29.99 or so and still be fair, considering, you know, all the games that you've seen before that have, uh, you know, car logos or truck logos or whatnot often are on the uh, kind of the mid-range end, which is good because all we want to do is ride lawnmowers. All right, let's check out this uh, Striper and see how it works out. Uh, we're going to go ahead and grab the Patriot now and 
try this attachment. Although I don't know if we can try out attachments before we use them. That's something that uh, seems to be a option as an upgrade for this mower, but that we're not necessarily able to use unless we modify it or upgrade it to have the tiger stripe. Regardless, we at least get to see uh, what this is like in comparison to the Toro. And keep in mind, there's still still plenty, plenty, plenty of OFTs and other larger mowers to see. We're only scratching the surface of what the game has here today. Let's go ahead and lower it down to, uh, what was it, about seven? Seven should be fine on this one. Oh, uh, six, okay. We'll go down to six then. Five, oh, it's the same as the Toro, uh, 5.70. And let's go ahead and see how this works. Oh, yeah, that definitely sounds, well, that sounds very nice. Well, gotta say, this mower seems to have a little bit more horsepower than the Toro, Ooh, but not by much. Ah, and look at that, she's shooting all the, uh, Oh, this is interesting. With the uh, side attachment here, it's going to be awfully difficult to get close to... Oh, yeah. So the Toro might be a little better option for getting closer, but you can always just go on the left side here. But it all depends on what kind of uh, terrain you're facing. So if you need to, you can always blow towards the center uh, when you're using your dispenser chute, whatever the technical term is, but pretty cool. I like this just as much as the Toro, maybe even more just because of the little extra power. And that'll be pretty helpful for going up and down hills. Now, as you see, we're overloading the engine. And I just want to see what the limitations of this one can be. And how she turns and whatnot. Let's put her through her paces. Pay no attention to the ground. We just want to see how quickly she can turn. Wow, this feels like it has a lot more power. But what we really want is speed and precision. I also wonder if we can bump any of these uh, branches with our roll bar here. Let's see if that actually does anything. Just want to see if that actually causes damage if we bump into it with the bar. It actually seems to kind of bump into it a little bit. Let's try that again. Oh no, it cuts right through it. Although we did scrape against it with the deck, but okay. Well, at least that's something we don't have to worry about. You would in real life, but there you go. All right, folks. Well, that's going to be it for our episode here on Lawn Mowing Simulator. I'm going to go ahead and be streaming this game today in the next couple of days too, and uh, maybe putting up some more episodes of the game. It's just really relaxing and fun to play and with games like Farming Simulator coming out and uh, games like American Truck Simulator and Euro Truck Simulator that seemed impossibly boring when they first came out. Like, who would want to drive a truck across Europe? Next thing you know, it's got multiplayer and, uh, you know, then the official multiplayer and whatnot, and those games became massive hits as well as uh, the new Microsoft Flight Simulator. So it's cool to see every little job, every industry. You can dismiss this as just like, oh, I would go mow a real lawn. Why wouldn't you just go mow your own lawn? Well... This simulates all the fun stuff of actually, you know, owning a business and doing marketing and basic level stuff, but not too bad. I also would like to see a little bit more dirt on the, uh, or a little bit more grass on the uh, pavement, but that looks pretty good, though. Still can leave a little pile, and I wonder if we can ride over it and blow it back on there. Oh, we can! Best game ever created. Oh, <laughs> that's awesome! The fact that we can uh, blow over the piles and uh, just toss it back into the uh, grass is really cool. I love that. I didn't think they'd actually put that in. All right, folks. Well, I'm out of here for now. Thanks again for watching. You all have yourself a fantastic afternoon, good evening, and good night. And I will see you all next time. Thanks again for just being a part of all the streams and whatnot. And uh, thanks again for leaving a like on the way out. I love this game. This is great. Can't wait to play it some more. Real, real big fan. Big, 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 big fan. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.